we were slowly giving up hope on great hand-drawn and even 2D animation. Then we found this amazing film. Hey y'all, Ash here, and today we are going to talk about the Apple TV exclusive movie, Wolfwalkers. We knew very little about this film going into it, and definitely felt pleasantly surprised by everything. Now, let's leap right into this, spoilers and all. The story takes place in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1650. It follows Robin, a young English girl, who was taught by her father how to become a little hunter. Her father was hired to hunt wolves for the Lord Protector in Ireland, so they moved. You instantly see the differences just by how Robin acts and is treated in her new living environment. She isn't allowed to go hunting with her father. Instead, she is forced to clean the house and even later on in the castle. I loved how right away we saw Robin's rebellious side. Immediately she wants to hunt, not clean. Her imagination leads her and it's just super adorable. That childlike mentality is exactly what leads her to Mabe the Wolfwalker. Their friendship is just the cutest thing ever. The way they bicker with each other while also helping each other. Even cute little nicknames. It honestly reminded me of my siblings and even my closest friends. They even get caught up in some mischief like tricking the townies of their bread and milk, which was a great representation of their quick relationship. Robin tries her best to get Mabe and her family to leave while keeping her pack as well as her family safe. And when she she too becomes a wolf walker, she cares about both sides even more. She cares about it so much that she is willing to leave the woods completely behind her. So much so that she prevents herself from sleeping, even a little nap, out of fear that she will be killed by the townies, or worse, her own father. Throughout the movie, the Lord Protector is very demanding and straight up rude. The tone does kind of shift at the end as the Lord Protector tries to control the wolf, who happens to be Mabe's mother, and then storms the woods with his troops. It takes a much more serious turn as these kids and wolves are now running and fighting for their lives. The ending I thoroughly enjoyed in the pure fact that Mabe and Robin can remain dear friends, if not sisters, and their parents are also satisfied. They become one large wolf pack, wolf walkers. Mabe is the primary person that has us, as a viewer, feeling connected to her mother. Any emotion we are supposed to feel is coming directly from her. This added level of depth that we get about Mabe as a character was written quite well. We don't get a lot of dialogue from her mother, and we get very small glimpses of her in human or wolf form. But in those small moments of interaction, we have a connection automatically to help her free her pack and child or just straight up help her live. Mabe's design was basically an adorable troll doll. Her energy was seriously contagious. She made me want to go running through the woods as a wolf myself. Her world slowly shatters more and more as the story goes on. Every day, she loses more of her home, and because she is naive and refuses to think her mom could get captured, she almost loses her life as well as everyone else's. I mentioned earlier that Robin has quite the imagination. She talks about wanting to hunt dragons, find mermaids, and selkie, you know, the fanciful stories. Robin is clearly adorable as a person and even more so as a wolf. You see, she doesn't really fit in the role that the world wants her to be, and I like how the more she does try to remain a townie, the more unhappier she gets. She is happy when she becomes who she truly wants to be. We see her love for everyone, like her bird Merlin. She loves him very dearly and is willing to go deeper into the woods just to get him back at one point. Robin has a heart of gold. She was taught to originally hunt wolves, not hate them. And that small difference is a good enough wedge to push a great conflict with her father. Robin's father, Bill Goodfellow, is very kind. All he wants to do is protect his little girl. The only way he sees fit to do this is by keeping her far from the woods. As the movie progresses, you see a form of frustration in him when he fights within himself of protecting his daughter, but also trying to allow her to follow her pure heart. At the end of the day, he is a pretty good dad, and part of what makes their tension so heartbreaking is that both sides make sense for the most part. He really just wants to do everything he can to keep her safe. Because in reality, Robin is very similar in personality to her father, between the love of the woods and wanting to be a good team, since it's just the two of them and their little family. We see the pure sadness he gets when she turns into a wolf and leaves his side. He doesn't resist the chains or anything, he just holds his daughter in his arms. Lord Protector is a great antagonist to push the story forward. He repeatedly puts the pressure on Goodfellow with no mercy, all because he does not want a town rebellion. 
he is more than willing to put a child in stocks even though they were being slave driven all day. He has no remorse for the things he has done and is willing to do them again because at the end of the day, he's a zealot. He does everything for his God. You openly see him communicate aloud to verify his cause was for righteous reasons. He reminds me of a very similar character of Javert in Les Mis. Lord Protector's biggest weakness is not doing more things himself. His constant delegating is part of what led to his downfall. If he killed Mabe's mom himself instead of ordering Goodfellow to do it, things would have turned out very differently for this movie's conclusion. I want to lightly mention the townies. We had the farmers and the evil children. They were certainly side characters, but they for sure added to the depth of the movie. First, the farmers and woodcutters. They were straight up hilarious. From mocking the Lord Protector, to tossing the sheep into the cage, or even the one gentleman farmer being kind to Robin. Because of his kindness, Robin throughout the movie visits him in the stocks to say a few words or bring him a piece of bread. The other townies to mention are the atrocious children. They were nasty little buggers. They sing mean songs of killing wolves and granted Robin sang the same song in the beginning, but these little children even throw Mabe into a cage upon Robin's mention. These children were a small glimpse of a rebellion that Lord Protector was afraid of because even some of the adults encouraged the children to start a ruckus. Literally, these children were mini terrors, but this added a level of understanding of the town democracy and lack of control that the Lord Lord Protector was trying to uphold but couldn't. The directing and animation in this film was completely mesmerizing. You can see so much passion in every single second of this film. The watercolor backgrounds are so detailed and beautiful. There are numerous transitions that are just amazingly unique. That's not even including the way the screen splits, almost like a comic in a few scenes. That makes those scenes even more an intense dramatic effect. There are a few sections where you can see some of the base art. Some didn't like this, but we at TNB actually really enjoyed it. We also enjoyed the simplicity of the artwork that would take place in certain moments, like the showing of the town in the background. Another perfect example of this is the ending when they are trying to bring Mabe's mom back. The wolves on the side are very simple, almost cave style drawings. It was great because it allowed us to focus on the intense scene that was happening literally in the middle of the screen. I am a sucker for dramatic colors being used to show a specific emotion. The biggest color difference is the red tones. They were heavily used in a lot of moments involving Lord Protector. He is a very aggressive character, and they use this red tone to intensify that effect. We also have moments where we get bright, cheerful colors to dull colors, especially around Robin. Three of my favorite notices of this action are in the beginning, middle, and towards the end of the movie. In the opening scene, we have woodland creatures enjoying their day. As time moves forward, we see it get dreary as the woods are taking down and the animals no longer feel safe. Mid-movie, Robin becomes a wolf walker soon after she was bitten by Babe. The paw print was already very bright, but it's the transition from human to wolf walker that the colors intensify. We see a brief glimpse through the eyes of a wolf, and the focus of color transitions was literally a work of art. Later in the movie, when Robin is working in the castle, you see the colors be dreary dark tones. Clearly she is depressed in her current predicament, but then the moment she is outside of the confines, the colors are astonishing. You also have the moments where the pack is running, and it's almost just one massive swarm. The art makes it look amazing, but also makes it intimidating if you were the humans taking their home. Lastly, I can't help but mention the music. Music in itself is its own art form. The movie's music was literally catchy. I couldn't help but listen to the soundtrack a few times when I completed the movie, and a couple songs I even added to my list of personal favorites. We at TNB cannot stress enough on how fantastic this movie truly is, and it should be available to purchase on Blu-ray or preferably 4K one day. We vote yes please. Have you watched this movie? How did you feel about the artwork? Was the music catchy for you too? Do you have a recommended 2D movie that is underrated? Let us know it all in the comments below. Maybe even hit that like and subscribe button next to it. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram for all the updates with our channel. And until next time, stay nerdy and keep binging.